Hey, hey, this is Behind the Scenes of Alice in Wonderland with uh, La Petite for the dress, Baby Dream Backdrops for the backdrop and floor, and technically the chair and the props are courtesy of me, I guess, technically in Hobby Lobby. But when she showed me the image of this dress, I knew that we would be in the middle of Snowmageddon so i had been wanting to make a moss covered chair for a while now and i knew that if i could get my tail to hobby lobby buy what i needed to buy i would actually have the downtime to be able to get it done and it took me a lot less time than what i originally planned it took me like 15 minutes so i'm gonna show you guys how to do it i took some little pictures and videos and here we go here is the actual chair that i bought from hobby lobby i had been eyeing it for a while but this kind of made me go ahead and purchase it um it was 83 dollars. i believe it was on sale um but it is a perfect little chair so I bought at Hobby Lobby Krylon Metallic Gold Spray Paint and I actually googled if I could spray paint a chair in 30 degree weather and everything I read said that you could so I was like okay well let's do the thing. Who knew? Who knew the best time to spray paint is when it's like 30 degrees outside? Like butter. Peel and stick moss. Not done, but isn't that pretty? And it literally went on like the best I've ever spray painted anything in my life. Like it was so easy. There were no runs, no bubbles. It, I, I don't know. It literally went on like butter. It was incredible. Here is the moss that I actually use. It is peel and stick moss. It's called Mossy Mat. And it's at Hobby Lobby back where all the other mosses are. Um, I believe the sheet was 16 by 18 and I ended up buying three packs because I just wasn't sure how much I would need. And so I ended up using one for the seat, one for the back, and I have quite a bit left um, over from the second one, but I just bought an extra because, I mean, I'd never done this before. I had no idea how much I was going to use. So I have to say, it's much easier to rip this down than it is to cut it. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's moss. Hmm. I actually found that it was very difficult to cut it and when I just sort of ripped it you could see in that video I was literally using one hand to do it and if you ripped it too much you could just rip off a little bit and just stick it on there and it looked fine. The only thing I would say is if you have, if you're putting it on something that has a pattern or a color under it, it will show through a little bit because the moss is, um, there's not a whole lot on there, I guess, if you could say, because it all apparently ended up on my jacket. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is like my husband's little mess around the house jacket. And he was probably not too happy when he saw that. So I brought the chair in the house and I had purchased a bouquet of flowers and I just took the flowers off the stems, trimmed the little plastic piece that connects them to the stem so they would lay flat. And I got out my trusty um, hot glue gun and went to town. I put some on the back and then I put some on the seat and then I had some cute little paper butterflies that I found in the scrapbook section of Hobby Lobby. And I put those on too just for a little added touch. And I just love how it turned out. I mean, is it absolutely perfect? No, but I, I, you know, if you know me, you know I'm not a perfectionist by any means. And... I think it looks beautiful with my little drink me um, bottle that I made and the dress and backdrop and floor and it was a blast and it took about mm, 15 minutes in total to make so there you go. So my original plan was to use Wonderland wall 
which is this. It's This is not um, true color. My phone is not reflecting true color. It's extremely green in real life. I don't know why it looks like this, but um, this was supposed to be on the wall, but then when I hung it up, I didn't care for it. Um, it wasn't, it just didn't look right with the chair I did. Here's the chair. It just didn't look, I don't know, it just didn't look right. But then when I put piano wall up, and then I, so I put one million wall on the floor. And it ended up looking super cool. I'm pretty happy with it. I just taped it down with masking tape. It was a premium. I couldn't believe it actually came today, literally an hour before the session. And then this backdrop is fleece on top of another fleece because when you do that, it like sticks to it like um, Velcro. You can smooth out the wrinkles easier. So there's a setup. Hey everybody, so I am going to go ahead and show you guys how I edited these Alice pictures. This is one that I um, ended up not editing and so we're just going to run through it today. The first action that I use, so I have Painterly 2 and Painterly 1 from Greater Than Gatsby and those are the two sets that I used with this or with this Alice series. Um, I the very first one that I used so I know that in painterly 2 there was a finishing tone and I knew I sort of wanted it to be kind of a cooler brighter more vibrant tone because I wanted it to look kind of like the Alice in Wonderland Disney cartoon it was one of my favorite ones growing up loved it could probably still recite every line to it and I just I love that and that's sort of the look I was going for here so what I'm gonna what I started off with so in painterly 2 set there are a set of finishing tones towards the bottom and they do different things different ones pull and pop different colors you just have to go through and see what all they do when you purchase an action set which is always the very first thing I do when I purchase a new set so when I went through these originally, I saw this cubism, or cubism, sorry, cubism finishing tone, and I'm going to hit play and continue. And it just sort of, I like what it does to certain images. And you'll see what it does here in just a second. So see how it just sort of like, pops those tones it pops the gold chair in the back I mean the whites look really good I just I love that so I'm gonna leave that as is actually you know what usually the first thing I do is um, portrait a portraiture and I didn't do that so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick before I move on so when I use portraiture I command J and I um, duplicate my background layers so that I can have more control over it then I'm just going to go into portraiture and I've covered this in other videos so I'm just going to run through it like I do normally I choose my eyedropper tool and generally what I'll do is sort of like close to in between the eyebrows and then she has um, her legs are darker because of the shadows so I'm going to choose both of those and as you can it does a really good job in this image so we're gonna leave it at that and I'm gonna go ahead and flatten I see a couple of strings that I'm gonna take care of on this dress really quick so I'm just using the um, this one <clears throat> the spot healing brush and I'm just I noticed these little strings so I'm gonna fix those or otherwise I will forget Okay, so I've ran Cubism from Painterly 2, and I've done my portraiture. And I'm going to go back up, and I'm, okay, so Leonardo Foundation is one that I use on literally 98% of the images that I take in studio with natural light. It's in Painterly Collection, the first one. And it's really great at popping blues and purples and pulling up shadows, as you're going to see. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. So I knew that I wanted the blues to pop. You can see that difference. I'll turn it off and on. And that's exactly what I wanted it to do. I am going to tone it down just a little bit. OK, 
because I want it to just be a little bit darker. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flatten that. So another thing that I knew I wanted was kind of a cartoon painterly look. So I'm going to go back down into painterly 2 now. And what I did was when I was trying to figure this out, I literally just ran through all of these painterly textures that are available in the painterly 2 set. There's a lot. But if you look out next to it, like, okay, right here where it says Clement, it says no paint plus light contrast. Or if you go down here to DaVinci, it says light, play, light paint plus clean contrast. So you get kind of a clue as to what they do in the description. So after I played several, I knew that I wanted it to be like very poppy and very cartoon-like. So I choose, chose Turner. So when I when you hit play on some of these and it goes at 100%, you might be like, ooh, yup, no. But you have to look at it as that's the extreme. So I actually do kind of not mind the 100%, but I photographed this dress for a dress company. And so I kind of wanted to still be able to see the linen type texture that's in the dress. So I took all of these up to, I want to say about 30%, and you can see the difference here. It just kind of adds that glossy painted look, and it just really kind of gives it that Alice in Wonderland vibe. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. There's one action that I used that is not a greater than Gatsby action. It's actually Jessica Drossen action. And it comes in, let me make sure because I get a lot of questions about this. <clears throat> let me make sure this is the right, let me just pull this over real quick. <clears throat> Never mind. I thought that would only pull the action bar over. Okay. It's JD Illumination Instant Overlays Volume 2. So there is um, an overlay in here that I use quite a bit. It's called Flashlight Cool, and I'm going to play it, and I'm going to show you what it does. I could leave it like that, but do you see how it gives it that kind of, I don't know how to describe it really, kind of like a golden pop? And then it sort of gives it a little bit, you can see what the, overlay looks like over here, but it kind of gives it sort of a vignette, but not. And so I love that. I love that golden tone. It kind of warms it up just a little bit and it gives it that pop. So that is flashlight cool. And I'll link um, all of these um, below the video and you can check them out. But these are awesome. I love these. Um, they do a lot of things. There's um, even some actions in the bottom that I sometimes use. There's one called Pretty Boost. I'm just going to show you what it does. It just kind of pops it a little bit. So like let's say I wanted to pop her face. I can invert this command I. It takes away what I've done, but then it makes it where I can mask what I want it to do. So I could pop her dress and her hair if I wanted to. And that it's just it's just there's a lot of helpful little actions, bonus actions that come with this uh, overlay set. So one other thing that I did, so there's several different skin glows that you can use. If you have the uh, portrait retouch collection with Greater Than Gatsby, it's a great collection, and they have several different ones over here in skin tone enhancers. There's a soft glow worm that I really like. Um, and it just adds kind of a little pop to hair and whatever else you want. Like if I wanted to kind of pop the little drink me bottle in her dress, you can do that. And that's how I did it. And that's it. And I popped her little face. You can also, so if you don't want to buy that portrait retouch, which it's really cool. I'll have to show you guys. It has the coolest thing. You know what? I'm going to show you while I'm in here. Okay, we're going to zoom in. Where's it at? Oh, it's sorry. It's brushless. Okay. Okay, so also a little trick. Command um, parentheses will, um, like if I zoom in command plus and I hit command parentheses, 
to the right, right parenthesis, it will um, fit your image to the window of Photoshop. So that's kind of a cool little um, quick key. Oh, you know what? I don't have... Dang it. Okay, I do not have... I should just edit this part out, but I'm just going to tell you guys. So, Portrait Retouch Collection includes eyelash brushes. And that sounds crazy, but they are so flippin' cool. So, I'm going to... You know what? I'm going to use those in because I have... This is a new computer, and I just haven't added those to this computer yet. And they are so fun, and I'm going to do that in another video. So, watch for that. Okay, so we'll zoom out. And that's Alice for you. Isn't she just adorable? I just... I love her and this wall is so cool and it's so pretty and the texture on it and everybody kept asking if this was real or a backdrop. I'm like, well, I wish I had a wall like this in the studio. I don't, but I have the second best thing, which is a backdrop and I'm going to link it below and um, I'll link the dress and the actions and everything below this video. And if you have any questions, please do not be shy to ask. I do not mind um, answering questions. And I hope that was helpful and kind of, I mean, I know it's fast. I'm a quick, simple editor, but I hope you learned something from it. So ask away. See you later.